Joining us to discuss, Kim Strassel, Potomac Watch columnist for The Wall Street Journal, and Steve Moore of the Committee to Unleash Prosperity Hotline and Freedom Works Vice President and All That Is Good in the World. Uh, Kim, I want to get to your column in a moment. I've had a few similar questions myself. Uh, actually, can I just, just on this, before we get to the jobs and all that, Kim Strassel, um, Bill Haggerty, Senator Haggerty, who was a great friend, worked together with him in the administration, uh, now a senator, he's saying he's not going to vote for unanimous consent cloture with the CBO scoring $256 billion deficit. In other words, of all the bad things in the infrastructure bill, they can't even make good on the promise that the pay-fors are paid for. And Haggerty's standing up against that, and all these senators, Republicans, are gathering around him, 15 of them, trying to hammer him into voting for cloture. I don't get that, Kim Strassel. It annoys me. That's why I'm going to you first. Yeah, they, they should be standing with him because, look, as you and I both know, Larry, a central promise of this entire group since they began this effort was we're not going to add a penny to the deficit. Right. And they argued that that was why this particular process was better than others because we weren't going to raise your taxes and, and we're not going to do anything to, to hurt the debt. Now it comes out. We, you could have seen this coming miles away, by the way. The gimmickry in that bill for the pay-fors was overwhelming. Now they got called out on it by the CBO. Uh, they've been exposed. Um, Haggerty at least has got the courage of his convictions to say, wait a minute, this was not what we originally promised. But but what's up with the other 14 Republicans that, uh, you know, seem willing, you know, just go out and be honest. Say, hey, we want to spend with abandon. We don't <laughs> care what happens to the deficit. Oh. All right? Just be honest. But don't try to pretend as though you're doing something you're not. Well, that's the thing. I mean, those 15 Republicans uh, should be defending Haggerty and saying, well, wait a minute. Okay, we're going to have to go back. I mean, of all the... Look, there is some good in that bill... And there's a lot of bad in that bill. The bad is green, okay? So apart from that, or on top of that, they can't even make the books balance. Their promises have been whacked by CBO. And Steve Moore, nobody's defending this guy, Haggerty, who, by the way, is a very good man and a principled man, and he's not going to back down. Yeah, the amazing thing is we spent something like $7 trillion on the last uh, year and a half, and they couldn't find, there's no spending reductions, offsets, none, zero. They're all, as, uh, as Kim was just saying, it's all gimmickry. Now, my favorite one, by the way, is that they're going to they're gonna have a unemployment insurance um, integrity program. <laughs> you know, after, after they've already seen $50 billion in fraudsters stealing money, and the money goes to Nigeria and West Africa and China, and now they're going to they're going to say oh we're going to have an integrity program to stop the fraud and we're going to count that as a saving. I mean my god, Larry, if a, a private businessman tried to do that to to balance his books, they'd throw him in jail. You know, okay, so Kim Strassel, here's one of the things I'm loving about this Green New Deal story. The car companies, all right? I I had a lot to do with the car companies uh, in the administration. Um, they begged us to lower the cafe fuel standards. We did. Then they walked away from us, and they went green, and they decided to side with California. Now, now, the car companies are saying, we're going to go to 50% of our sales. They're going to be electric vehicles. Right now, that's 3%, but they're going to 50% <laughs> in eight and a half years, Kim. But here's the wonderful catch. They want Uncle Sam to pay for it. They want Uncle Sam to buy the cars. They want Uncle Sam to build the electric gas stations or whatever, the rechargers, et cetera, et cetera. So the car companies, God bless them, Kim Strauss, they're all in as long as the federal government pays for it. How about that? Is that really like American free enterprise or what? Yeah, so this is a dirty little secret of the entire Biden green agenda. You just named one piece of it. It's all corporate welfare. Mm. Uh, that's mm -hmm. a piece of it. But go and look at this infrastructure bill as well. There's bailouts for the nuclear industry. You've got mm -hmm. the Department of Energy now returning to its role, its failed role, I would mention, as a, uh, a would-be venture capitalist. Everybody remember the names Solyndra and Fisker. Well, they're getting even more money to, to take in every single company 
company out there that can pretend that it's working on some sort of renewable energy venture is going to be coming to the government with their handout. You know, and that's before you get into government now meddling in broadband, uh, meddling in the grid, mm. uh, meddling in all sorts of things that have traditionally been handled either by local authorities or by the private sector. Yeah, so, you know, uh, can I add to one thing to that, uh, Larry? You know, we, all we've been hearing for the last five or six years out of uh, out of the green industry is how efficient solar and, and wind power are and, and that they're more efficient than the than the uh, conventional, you know, coal and, and natural gas. And yet all we do is continue to pour more and more money into them. So they're building these massive uh, multi uh, billion dollar uh, transmission lines, as Kim was just talking about. Also, we can link up the uh, the wind and solar power on top of the $150 billion we've already provided them. Kim, Kim and you are right. This is corporate welfare. It's giveaways to these corporations, and, th and that's why they love it. Yeah, but there's a really stupid piece in this. If, even if you believe in the, what I'm calling the battery-driven economy, and, and by the way, I do not want a battery-driven economy. I think we'd, we should use all power sources available. Yes, but absolutely. Even if you believe that stuff, we don't have the resources to do it because the Bidens don't what? want drilling. They don't want mining. We don't have the rare earths. And this is a plan to make China number one. China, so, Larry, dominates, me, yeah. China well, dominates the rare earths. China also dominates the solar business uh, because of the polysilicon. But I'm particularly focused on the lithium, cobalt, copper, et cetera. Mm -hmm. The Bidens don't want any of that mining in the U.S. We have some in, in Alaska, in, in, in Minnesota, and other places. Right. So it's like we, even if you buy the battery-driven economy, which I don't, we couldn't do it anyway. But we have more mineral resources than any other country in the world. We are the most mineral-rich country all over Wyoming, Montana, the Dakotas. You mentioned Alaska. We, we have, uh, by many estimates, about $20 trillion of these, uh, of these uh, minerals, including the rare earths that are needed for solar and wind and, and so on. And, and yet you're right. The, basically, there's almost a moratorium yeah. on mining in yeah. this country, not just for coal, but for everything. everything. But the other thing that people are forgetting is even if everybody has, has uh, a, a, an electric car, which I agree with you, that's not going to happen, you still need electric. You need to charge the batteries. You need yes. electricity. Yes. And we get 60 percent of our electricity from coal and natural <laughs> gas and nuclear power. So are we really going to go to 100 percent? Uh, wind and solar, I don't think so. It's a terrific idea. Kim Strass, I'll give you the last word. Can Larry Elder be the next governor of California? What do you think? You know, I agree with you. I love this story. I'm fascinated by uh, the way it's it's turning out. And you know why, too? Just I think it's because he's got a lot of really smart, practical, innovative ideas, and he's talking straight to Californians. Mm -hmm. They don't get that very often. He, he's a great communicator. He's got a, a lovely way about him. He always has. Could be a revolution in Sacramento, which would be. And by the way, don't forget totally that Glenn, very cool. Glenn, 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 Glenn I know Youngkin Glenn Young, and then we may have some action yeah. in New York too. Who knows? Kim Strassel, <laughs> the Journal. Thank you very much, Steve Moore of Everything That Is Good. Thank you very much.